right? So it's gonna be some sort of pattern, and it's gonna be really scary. So I've got this couple in working right now, and the wife is, um, she's the withdrawer, she was the pursuer, now she's the burnout withdrawer, the husband has now become the pursuer, he was the withdrawer, and he was very angry, and he was also, um, he abused pornography. So she turned the switch off, she disengaged, she went through the, the attachment, disengagement system, right? So she went through depression, she went through protest, depression, and then attachment system, all the way through. And so now she has this position, she's guarded, and now he has been clean for like six months. He hasn't been angry, and he's been pursuing her. Mm -hmm. And so she's still stuck in her position, and the pattern, or she's created a, a different pattern, it was a pattern of her pursuer, him withdrawing, now it's a pattern of him pursuing, she withdrawing, and she's stuck in that pattern, because in that pattern she gets a reward. Mm -hmm. What's her reward? What's he doing in the pattern? Pursuing, right? Yeah. So if she switches and turns the pursuer, what's she afraid can happen? Okay. Go back to the drawer, and then what does the drawer do? Looks at pornography and gets angry. Right. Right? So there's behaviors associated with the, with the withdrawn position that she's afraid. So she's afraid to shift her position into pursue, pursue. Because if she starts to pursue, implicitly there's a lot of fear about everything is pattern. And so we don't have the imagination of a pursuit pursuit pattern. We've never had it. We don't know what that looks like. So all I know, all that's familiar to me, is a pattern of me going back to my old stuff and him going back to his old stuff. And so she stays guarded to maintain her own safety. But it doesn't develop intimacy. It's just a different dysfunctional pattern. It's a, dis it's a dysfunctional pattern of distance without him looking at pornography um, and without him becoming angry. And she just thinks that's a better pattern than the old pattern. Right, so it's an improvement from her perspective, but it's worse for him. Right, and so, there, so it hasn't actually haven't replaced a secure-based pattern, is what we'll call it in this class, right? A secure-based pattern. They haven't found the secure-based pattern. They've just done pattern replacement based upon time of being burnt out, being a pursuer. So naturally that can happen, right? Mm -hmm. So these patterns are within the design of God. So there's, we have a God pattern too. We have a pattern with God of experiencing God directly through God and then experiencing God through other people to us. Right, so there's a pattern in place. We have to be a participant. It's an interpersonal exchange between ourselves and God and God back with us and then us with God. And so we have a particular way in which we reach out to God and a particular way we reach out to other people. And it's all patterned. Right, the way we pray is patterned. We choose denominations based on the pattern we're most comfortable with. So if we're Pentecostal, we love the Pentecostal pattern, right? Or if we're Orthodox, we love the Orthodox pattern, right? There's, and there's like, there's 5,000 patterns of, of Christianity that you can in, in, engage in, right? Mm -hmm. And they all value different elements. And so you get it, so you like a certain type of worship, so you go to church, you get the pattern of worshiping that way, and then when someone else comes in and please worship, you don't like it because you like the old pattern. Mm -hmm. okay. So we love our patterns. They're very familiar to us. And so changing someone from one pattern to another pattern is one of the most difficult things that we can do. Whether it's interpersonal or interpersonal patterns. Right? And so patterns can't be changed from the top down. Patterns can only be changed from the bottom up. Because patterns are rigid and they tend to be inflexible. Because they're we're designed to be in patterns, and patterns are a part of what keeps us keeps life predictable. And we already have a template to know what to do in the patterns that we're in. Any new pattern is unfamiliar territory. And we as humans don't like things that are unfamiliar, even if they're better. So we'll use the dysfunctional, familiar pattern any day over the functional, unfamiliar pattern. Yeah, I think most people just that come across would say, Because anything more than this much intimacy yeah. is too much right. for me. Right, because they have shifted. I'll show you how they've shifted. So I think I've seen this one before, but just a bit of a reminder. So let's say this is distance, right? You guys can remember this. This is a close relationship. And then when you move out, you create distress. And 
anxiety, right? Just healthy relationships, creating stress. And then you have what you're talking about. And this is what my couple was today. This is the new pattern. And to move in creates the stress, right? Which is opposite of what it should be. It should be that moving in actually lowers the stress, moving out creates the stress. They flip it upside down. So now when they, suddenly when they move out further, they become less distressed. And so what therapy is doing is you're pushing them back into the pattern, into a different pattern, but there's so much resistance and so much defenses in getting into that new pattern, right? That they just want to rebound back out here. That's when they feel comfortable, like they can breathe. It's kind of like personal space. You know, you guys have a different level of personal space you like, and so like, if you're like standing like this close to someone, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, now I can breathe. This is good. And there's some people like, they feel better when they're like right here, you know? And so that like space is pattern and distance. And so there's patterns in here and there's patterns in here. And so we're replacing patterns, but we really are trying to create like a craving, like attachment craving is a craving for closeness as a means of being a safe haven, secure base, belief from. Where this is a distant, <coughs> this is a distant pattern of self reliance, right, and um, and comfort. So, like in my session with this couple, I'm like, um, do you have an imagination of what it would look like to to sh to shift your pattern and for you to return to a pursuer? And she's like, I haven't done that in like 30 years. And I said, well, what was there a time before that? She, I said, what, what did you used to do? And she goes, well, I used to hold his hand. I used to like snuggle up next to him. And I said, so do you have an imagination of what that would look like? And I said, so so imagine yourself right now doing that. I know it was too much to ask her to actually do that. Normally I'd actually have that kind of move and I said, so imagine what that'd be like and then tell me what comes up for you. And she goes, well, I feel incredibly uncomfortable. Which is really common when you switch your patterns. Any pattern, even a healthy pattern can feel uncomfortable and then turn in the bridge between the old pattern and the new pattern. She's like, oh, I feel so uncomfortable. I turn to him and I say, so she felt like she felt really uncomfortable. I'm taking on what you felt comfortable before. And I said, well, what does that mean? He says, yeah, I feel really uncomfortable too. And I said, so in your head, like we were saying, in your head that seems right for you to do but implicitly from the bottom up, this feels really uncomfortable. And so what keeps you from doing it is the uncomfortableness, right? So the, uh, the discomfort that comes with pattern changes oftentimes keeps us from making the, the changes. So think about other patterns, exercise, dieting. If we can just get through the discomfort of the pattern shift, we just hang on long enough for the pattern to shift, then we can start to experience the benefits of it. But in, the, but in between, we're experiencing all the consequences of shifting the pattern. Yeah. All the uncertainty, all the pain, right? And so we don't want to shift the pattern because we don't want to sit next to our partner, you know, up against them and feel incredibly uncomfortable. But we have to uh, tolerate the uncomfortable to get to the comfortable. And that's what a lot of couples aren't willing to do or don't understand that they tolerate the uncomfortable. Because uncomfortableness is a sign this isn't the right thing to do. It's not really a sign that's the right thing to do. It's just that they perceive it as a sign. Right, because we are we are uh, we are joy seekers, and so we reward ourselves by what feels good, and so we can never get past past impasse of the, the discomfort of the transition to the pattern, because as soon as we get a sense of something doesn't feel good, then we try to get out of it. Is it uncomfortable for people? But then I think, like with my couple, yeah, since they haven't done it, it feels just so awkward. Kind of yeah, awkward. I don't know what. I don't want to do it. I feel inadequate. Yeah. Yeah. Those are all really good things to acknowledge in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the awkwardness, the inadequacy. Um, it's like intimacy is foreign. It's something that I want, but I feel foreign in doing it. You know, I don't know how to participate, right? But I know it's supposed to feel good. And so, yeah. It's so to stay in it until you start to experience the, what it would be sort of like uh, the, the positive consequences of engaging the behavior. But and if they both admit their inadequacies, then it's less it's less difficult on them because there's not much shame associated with the mm -hmm. behaviors. Yeah, but it has to be like some of the discomfort. It's interesting, like some discomfort can be mediated by behavior, but most of the discomfort is mediated by what's here, right? The craving. They're missing out on the craving. They know what they want to do, but and they know what they'd like to have, but there's so much resistance to the appetite for it. Like when you get into a really good cycle, there's so much appetite for it. Just like there's an appetite for distance. Right, you come in and if you're in a, a stressed relationship that's distant, then your partner comes in and then you just kind of find your way upstairs. And there's some comfort in that. And there's some appetite to move away. And you're shifting the appetite from moving away towards moving forward. Which requires a whole, uh, you know, there's layers of safety and um, 
uh, the captain was being mad at. And so, yeah. Okay. All right. Let, let me pray for us, and then we'll get going. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you um, for this day and for this beautiful weather.